Hi everyone, welcome back to my lab and today's video, which is going to be a makeup haul update. It's actually a several makeup haul update. I had a couple of open hauls. I call them open hauls when I haven't come back and reported on all the products that I had stored away sort of on top of my desk to make sure I wouldn't forget to report back on them. I'll show you all the products and let you know how they've been working out for me. I will link the original haul videos in the description box down below in case you want to check it out to get those really close up views of the products, including swatches and my initial opinions and why I purchased them. Before we get into the video, if you're new here, I'm Jody. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. I hope you'll enjoy it. Consider subscribing to my makeup family for three brand new videos every single week on Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now we have a lot of products to get through, so let's get started. I'm not sure quite where to begin, so I'll just start anywhere and go with the first product that I reach for. The first one I wanted to mention was the Fenty Beauty Foundation. This is their hydrating foundation, and I was working off of a sample of this foundation for quite some time. I've sort of decided to pick up samples of foundation to avoid wasting product and making sure that if I return this, someone else can still purchase it, that it's in perfect condition. I just wanted to take advantage of the Sephora sale at that time. In any case, I picked mine up in the shade 260, which is not an exact match for me. It's a little bit peachy, but I think it still works really well, especially since I apply a really light layer. Now, originally, I wasn't a big fan of this foundation because it is a little bit thicker and when I first applied it I kind of went in with a lot of product not intentionally it was just I was using a different type of primer that I don't typically use and it was just a little bit heavy for me but after I wore it a couple times which I shared in my review video I realized that for stage makeup it's really good because it does give you a little bit more coverage and then the wear time on it is really great it does claim to be a long wear foundation and I would have to agree with that it definitely fares really well in sweaty situations. Let's talk about the Ilia foundation next. This is the True Skin Serum Foundation. It is lightweight, smoothing, and aloe infused. Aloe leaf juice is actually the first ingredient. I'm fascinated by the ingredients list on this foundation. I don't have anything remotely like it. My shade is Chios SF6. This was just recently featured in a favorites video, so I absolutely love it. It's a serum foundation, so it's really, really liquidy, really runny, really lightweight, doesn't settle into fine lines but evens out my skin tone beautifully it can layer on itself if you wish to get a slightly heavier coverage but I don't really think you're gonna get anything more than a medium at the absolute maximum for this foundation my preference of course is for tinted moisturizer to light medium coverage and so this is absolutely perfect for me if you have dry skin if you have sensitive skin if you have more mature skin you need to try this I love it so so much I was recently in the store and I saw that they have a hydrating or luminizing primer and I am so curious to try that out. But I've been loving my Ciate one so much that I thought I would just finish that one before I bring in any more product. Let's talk about the newly reformulated Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. This is the Natural Skin Perfector. My shade is 3N1 Sand and it is a great shade match. This is another one of those for which I've been working out of samples. I picked it up during the Sephora sale. I have worn it three times so far. Still working from the sample. A little bit goes a really long way. This foundation has SPF 30 as well and it's basically a tinted moisturizer. It has such a beautiful luminous finish. I haven't done a full review to this foundation but I definitely can if you're interested. It has a beautiful luminous finish. It's really hydrating. You can apply it with your hands. It's not my preference to work with my hands so I stick to my Luxie Beauty brush but it applies really beautifully again over my Ciate primer. The shade matte is really really good and I just love how hydrating and luminous it is it has a very dewy finish which I absolutely love I have other products in her line before she did the reformulations which I absolutely love to mix with my makeup forever ultra HD foundation the liquid one to impart that luminosity to that foundation as well and have a slightly heavier coverage and it works really well for mixing as well I did pick up the luminous I think it was called luminous foundation or luminous moisturizer which is very similar to this but there are a lot fewer shades available I think that one had like maybe six to eight shades it's an even lighter product than this but that one I haven't tried out I can't speak to that one just yet I will definitely report back but this one is an absolutely beautiful product and I do recommend 
recommended if you have dry, more mature skin. I think it's something you could enjoy. I'm not exactly sure why I went so foundation crazy. I think it was because there were just so many foundations released that I was really curious to try all of them. So the next one I want to talk about is by Kevin Aquan. This is the foundation Balm. Now the name Balm really fooled me. I picked mine up in the shade Medium FB07 and I do find it a little bit pink. This is what the actual packaging looks like. It's quite a large box to hold just that. It's because it comes with this little brush that you use to apply it. I have used the brush to apply it but I still like my Luxie Beauty brush better. So here's what the foundation looks like. You can see I have barely put a dent in it. I've only used it a couple of times so far and I have to say that it is a little bit more dry than the name Balm would make you think. I thought that it was going to be a very hydrating, lightweight foundation, especially since their previous foundation, I think it was called the Skin Enhancer or something like that, was so full coverage, but that actually wasn't the case. I do find that this one is a little bit heavier. My skin doesn't breathe as well when I'm wearing it. I'm wearing it today, by the way, because I wanted you to be able to see it. And again, it's not my favorite. Of all the ones that I have showed you so far, this is my least favorite, but I wanna play with it a little bit more since I have worn it a couple of times I want to give you my initial thoughts and I just find that it's just a little bit heavy than I personally prefer and the shade match is not exactly what I go for I find it a little bit pink if I was paying attention I would have read that this actually says that you instantly even out complexion with a full coverage finish it is supposed to be a foundation that has some skincare properties to it it is a dimethicone based foundation it has a lot of silicones and to be be honest any skincare ingredients are showing up really towards the bottom of the ingredient list so I wouldn't count on it for that very different than the Ilia foundation where those skincare ingredients are way at the top of the ingredient list so right now I have to say the Kevin Aquan foundation is my least favorite of the ones I've showed you so far it's just a little bit heavier I can't say that I would return it at this Gosh, so that too. Needed it. Oh, my daughter just came in here. She was making fun of me. She loves making fun of me when I'm filming. And she said Wayne Goss just reviewed this and he also didn't really care for it. So maybe I'm in good company. Those are all the foundations I had to share. I did have a couple of blushes. The first one is from the Sephora collection. And this is something that caught my attention because of watching Andrea Renee's videos. She loves these blushes. They are the Sephora collection Modern Powder Blush Duo. And it has a creamy texture and buildable soft matte finish. I picked mine up in the shade Peach Blossom and that's what it looks like. I do like that you get two separate shades so you can kind of mix and match to customize your blush shade and it is the blush that I'm wearing today. I decided to wear something a little bit peachy to offset the cool tones that I have going on today. Cool tones scare me to no end. But I'm wearing the Lime Crime Venus Immortalis palette. Most likely it's going to be the video just prior to this one so if it's already up I'll put it up in the cards. But I am wearing this blush so that you can see how it looks like. It's beautiful. I love a matte blush. I think that even though luminous blushes look really pretty and glowy, they look a little less natural than something matte that your skin would look like, you know, if you're naturally flushed. And this is a beautiful shade. I think it comes in about six colors. You need to tread really lightly with this one because even though it looks light in the pan, it picks up on a brush really, really easily and it's super, super pigmented. It lasts really well throughout the day. It blends beautifully has no problem picking up on a brush she was absolutely right about this one and it's definitely a brand and a line that I would consider in the future if I was looking for more blushes but man I need to tone it down on blushes I have so many. I did pick up another blush which just caught my eye and I was so interested in it because it is a whipped blush. This is by Shiseido and I actually don't have a lot of products from Shiseido. I, I definitely use the Shiseido facial cottons for my skincare and I love those but I don't have too much else from Shiseido especially not in their makeup. And this is the Minimalist Whipped Powder Blush. I picked mine up in the shade number one which is Sonoya and it comes in this beautiful glass pot. It does have a little cap there which you can remove it presumably will help you keep the product from drying out if you keep replacing that so that's what I've been doing now this is a blush that I actually have used quite a few times I do like it on bare skin when I'm not wearing foundation because I can go in with a synthetic brush and kind of tap it over my cheeks even with my fingers and tap it over my cheeks and then blend it out it blends out beautifully over bare skin I have also tried it over unset 
foundation. And when I'm working over unset foundation, typically what I will do is I will pick up a little bit of product on my finger, apply it to the back of my hand, pick it up with a synthetic brush, and then apply it using dabbing motions just to make sure that I'm not going to have to swirl too much and possibly move my foundation around and make a mess. So that's the way that it's been working out best for me over foundation. But I also found that the same technique going in from the back of your hand on a synthetic brush works really well even over powder if you've already powdered your foundation you just want to go in with a light hand and build upward so again you don't get that cakiness this does have a powder finish so it sets to a powder finish and you can feel it even when you pick it up and you apply it to the back of your hand you can feel it dry almost immediately so it does apply well even over a set face beautiful finish last beautifully i think they have maybe five or six colors in this line and it's just a really interesting product i don't have anything like it i do recommend it if you're interested in checking it out and i might pick up one or two more shades but again no more blush i did pick up this little duo from kaya and it's a mochi glow and mochi pop so it's basically a blush and highlight duo these are minis from their existing line the highlighter is in the shade zero one toy alien and the blush is in the shade 02 atmosphere so this is from their bouncy blendable blush line and this one is from their highlighter so I'll tell you about the highlighter first it's a very nice champagne highlighter this one does have glitter it looks beautiful over foundation as well as on your skin directly it looks really beautiful but it does have a slight glitter it's very refined glitter and as the day goes on you see less of the glitter I would say and more of the glow it has a very beautiful glow and I do enjoy this one very nice product to try out the blush is this one here and to the touch it's creamy but I like to pick this one up similar to the Shiseido blush I'll take a synthetic brush and since this one is kind of pressed I will just swirl it in there it's very hard since it's so small like look at it relative to my thumb it doesn't have a lot of surface area there but if I'm using a smaller brush like something like this one which I'll talk about shortly you'll see that it fits in there really well and the product does pick up really nice Nicely, applies perfectly well over powder or just your bare skin this was a great and fun way to try out the brand because I had never tried out either of these products from Kaja Beauty and I enjoy both of them I think I paid maybe like $20 for the little duo and I've been using them several times and it looks like I haven't made a dent so another sort of face product that has been in a favorites before this was in my favorites last month so not September but August this is a palette I made using makeup forever powders I chose two matte blush and a sculpting powder which really is a good blend between a contour as well as a bronzer for me I love this little palette because I customized it I picked shades that I would want to travel with so I have a more peachy blush and then more of a cool tone kind of just came in from the cold flush plus a sculpting powder you do have a mirror in the palette and you do save if you pick up three of the powders in the larger palette I think that the total price I paid for the three products and the palette was about $45 everything will be linked up down below in case you want to check out anything for yourself but I think makeup forever is a brand that doesn't get enough love their products are beautiful I think it's a true makeup artist brand and I really enjoy it I have wanted one of these for so long I finally made one and I really enjoy it I also picked up the two Charlotte Tilbury glowgasm face palettes I picked up lightgasm which is the lighter of the two as well as lovegasm which is the darker one I've used them both unfortunately I forgot to use them in my Charlotte Tilbury video but I'm here to report back on those this is the lightgasm palette and what it looks like now I find that with these products as a lot of reviewers have said in the past they are really firmly pressed so you want to use a very densely packed brush to pick up these powders the lightgasm palette is my least favorite of the two I really enjoy the other one a lot more for my skin tone I'm wearing the bronzer from this palette today but I did have to build it up it's it's just a product that takes a little while to use if you have absolutely any kind of tan to your skin skin tone at all I would go for the darker one because you, you can always go in with a lighter hand with that one this one really takes some building I went in with a brush several times I was using my Smith cosmetics bronzer brush which is a natural hair brush really picks up the powder really well now in terms of the blushes they really perform more like highlighters on me or a blush topper which every time I hear that and hearing myself say it, it's crazy like when did we have a makeup step called blush topper <laughs> If you said that to someone who doesn't watch YouTube, they think you're crazy. But in any case, 
they function more like highlighters for me and the highlight is actually really beautiful it works really well it doesn't have a lot of base color so it's not something that'll be too light on my skin tone this one is the glowgasm and in this sense the blushes really perform more like blushes on me even though they are definitely those glowy blushes that Emily Noel loves so much the highlight is a little bit darker but I can still wear it again because it doesn't have a very strong base and the bronzer is a little bit more red but it's also deeper so I can can work with it a lot more quickly so if you have any tan at all I would definitely go with the deeper of the two palettes if you can find them they're still available here and there my best friend is very fair complected she actually prefers the light gasm palette and it works out really really well for her so I can use both palettes but if you're near my skin tone or deeper definitely go with the love gasm continuing with the face products I have this highlighter palette from Dominique cosmetics this is the Prisma glow highlight effects palette Palette, and it's a highlighter quad where you have one that is a cream product so this is what your palette looks like this one here is a balm I am wearing it today I applied it over unset foundation and it's not my favorite honestly it's not my favorite I love liquid illuminators but this one is it's a skin gloss it's actually called a skin gloss and so essentially it's meant to be layered with the other products today I layered it with fire glow and I realized that fire glow is really deep for my skin tone it was giving me that dark shadow when I faced you know head on so I topped it off a little bit with pink haze and that's the highlighter that you're using today I think personally that even though these shades may look lighter in the pan this is something that's going to be better suited for skin tones darker than my own so if you have a deeper skin tone and this palette calls out to you then maybe it's something you might consider personally I would recommend waiting until it goes on sale I have a feeling that it's going to go on sale sale highlighting palettes you know usually you can't use every single product and you have to really weigh if it's gonna be something that's going to be worthwhile for you I do think that it emphasizes texture a little bit when you apply it over the gloss it's not a smooth layer of highlight and I really buffed to get it to blend plus I applied some setting spray and girl on meteorites over it to get it to kind of look like it looks right now it looks really pretty but I had to work so if you're interested in this I would not recommend it if you have a light skin tone it's definitely something for medium tan and deeper skin tones in my opinion and I would I would wait for a sale I don't think it's worth the full price I'm sorry like it's just not I personally regret this it's just not well suited for me my skin tone and my preferences I have a couple of other highlighting products I have this one from Jouer which this highlighter got so much hype that I had to know how it was gonna be and you know I like it I think it's pretty I don't like it better than the Anastasia Amrezi highlighter which I hear is coming back did you guys hear that I'm not gonna buy a backup I have one it doesn't even have a dent in it as much as I've used this I don't need a backup don't need a backup in any case this is a beautiful highlighter it functions really well I think it's fine it's limited edition and it got like a big fuss people made a big fuss about this one I think it's pretty I think it's fine but the one that really made me do a double take is the one that I recently featured in my September favorites video and it's going to be this one from milk makeup this is their flex highlighter in the shade lit I did purchase another shade but like I mentioned in my favorites video I'm still playing with that one this is a very standard champagne type highlighter again not too strong of a base color so I think that the range of skin tones that can use this is really quite wide I wouldn't go too too fair or too too deep but anything in the middle I think could really enjoy this highlighter it comes in three other shades as well the formula of this is incredible it blends beautifully I was wearing it in my favorites video if you want to see it in action it's very easy to apply I didn't have to fuss with it like I did with the one that I'm wearing today from Dominique Cosmetics. It just looked beautiful from the get-go. Beautiful, magnetized closure, and compact. Absolutely love this one. If I was going to recommend any highlighter that I showed here today, this is it. I purchased two sets of eyelashes from the Sephora collection, the Lash Stories. I've not worn the ones in the type of Sahara, but I did wear Jet Setter. I did have to trim these when I wore them. They are very long lashes. They have a thicker lash band, but if you work with them, you trim them to fit your eyes. They really fit quite beautifully, and they retail for like $7. So that's a drugstore price at Sephora, and the lashes were really quite nice. So if there's any in this Jet Setter collection that appeal to you and you enjoy wearing fall, 
Mouse lashes, I would definitely go for those. I'm going to show you these up close so that you can get an idea of how thick the lash band really is. And they are very long lashes, so these are for drama. But I think they work great. Definitely recommend those. I would pick up more if I was looking for more lashes. I shared that I bought this little perfume gift set from Toka. This is in the shade Julieta. It came with a rollerball of the perfume, a hair mist, and a hand lotion. I purchased two kits because they were on clearance for like $10. I love this fragrance. It's beautiful. It's a floral, but it's not too overpoweringly floral. I don't enjoy like super strong floral fragrances but this one is really nice it's like a fresh floral and I really like it I think I'm going to purchase the full-size hair mist once I make it through these so the shade so I'm sorry the scent Toca Julieta definitely recommend you pick up a sample I think that they have frequently sent this as a sample you know like when you make a purchase at Sephora and I really like it I'm glad I caught that little set on clearance it was a good find and the other pieces are living permanently in my purse which is always a good sign. Another fragrance I picked up is this one by Commodity. I believe that they have gone out of business, but in different Sephora's you may still find one or two pieces from the collection. I picked up the fragrance Rain and it was on clearance. It's beautiful. I'm wearing it today. It's just a very fresh, clean fragrance. Those tend to be the ones I am drawn to. And my friend told me I would love it, so I was lucky I was able to find that one. Just keep a lookout if you're in a Sephora and take a whiff of these fragrances because they have many different ones and they're all on clearance. And including like candles and things like that. So just keep an eye out. You might get lucky like I did. I'll briefly tell you about this brush cleaner. I did a full review and demonstration using this. It's the Sonic Clean Sonic Makeup Brush Cleaner. It's very expensive for what it is. It's $40. I bought it during the sale, so I paid a little bit less. And as I have lived with it longer, I have learned that I really prefer this for foundation brushes. It's very hard to get liquid and cream foundations out of brushes, and this really helps because the cleaning pad has longer prongs and when you set the vibrating brush in there it really deep cleans your brushes I don't use it so much for eye brushes unless they are really really heavily soiled with like a pigment it helps get the pigment out as well but I find that I use it most with my foundation brushes I will link the video up in the cards in case you want to check it out it does work it's a nifty little gadget I have a set of hair products. I bought this in a kit. It's the Verb Reset Collection and it comes with a clarifying shampoo, a repairing mask, and it came with the reset kind of leave-in treatment. It's called a sealing mist. And then it also came with a sample of the Verb Ghost Oil. So I'm gonna talk about these first since they kind of work in conjunction with one another. It is really important that I use clarifying shampoos from time to time because I use a lot of dry shampoo and product in my hair. My hair is really Really thin and if it starts to weigh down too much my hair actually will start falling out and I can't afford that I don't have that much hair so I like to use a clarifying shampoo from time to time to remove build up an oil so that my hair doesn't have that greasy feeling and it doesn't just slide out of my scalp so this actually works really great I was looking for a replacement for my Briogeo clarifying shampoo that was discontinued and this is a great find I've used it several times it's recommended that you use it once once every three to five washes. So it's not gonna be something that's going to replace your regular shampoo and conditioner. It's a once in a while kind of thing as needed. And all three pieces work together and are recommended every three to five washes. So that's how I've been using it. The clarifying shampoo, when you put it in, it's drying. You can tell you get that squeaky clean kind of feel in your hair. So then it's nice that you get to use the conditioning mask right after that. So you can add a little bit more hydration back into your strands and then this is something that you would apply kind of like you do it's a 10 and it's supposed to smooth the ends and just seal the cuticle to have the effects of the clarifying shampoo last a little bit longer I've really enjoyed the three products and in terms of more luxury hair care those are more on the affordable side in, in Sephora now the ghost oil is in a part of the ghost line which I love the ghost shampoo and conditioner for every day this is really nice it doesn't have an oily consistency at all it's more like a frizz kind of serum which you can apply for heat protecting to help you style your hair a little bit faster in terms of blow drying or straightening and to have your hairstyles last a little bit longer it's something I've been enjoying applying when my hair is damp and even though I've been using it you can see that I have a lot more my hair is really fine I don't need a lot of product so really a half a pump is enough for me to do my whole hair when my hair is damp and I really like that as well another hair product I had picked up are these <laughs> scrunchies they are 
are from the brand Slip and I've shown them. I think I showed them when I hauled. I actually had one in my hair. They are satin fabric scrunchies. They're really thin and I love them because I can use them to hold my hair while I sleep or if I have my hair in a ponytail and they don't damage my hair. They don't sort of snag or anything like that and I think that they're softer on the cuticle of my hair. I do enjoy those. They're really pricey for what they are but I do like them. It came in a pack of three. I have a black one, a beige one, and this one in animal print. So I do recommend those, especially if you have fine hair. That's everything that I have in hair products. I did have one eyeshadow palette. The eyeshadow palette I picked up was from Viseart, the Rosé Edit. I was always curious about these palettes. This is such a tiny palette. I love the Viseart Matte Formula. It feels drier to the touch. It doesn't necessarily swatch well at all, but it performs beautifully on the eye, and that's what really matters. I love this little palette. I know they have two more. I may or may not have purchased those other two. There's one that's like more warm neutrals, and the other one is deep neutrals, which is really pretty. But I use this palette, and it I it had a little bit of a learning curve because there's a metallic formula in here from Viseart that's not their traditional metallic formula from like their 12 pan pro palettes and I realized that they were creasing on me my eyelids are hooded they also tend to develop a little bit of oil buildup on my lids and so they crease a lot and I noticed every time I was wearing them I was creasing so I actually found that when I use them with the Muse Beauty it's the Isum mixing medium now that's perfect Perfection. So I was wearing this eyeshadow palette in my favorites video So you can check that out if you want to see them in action and it performed Beautifully the metallics are really really rich I think it's something that Viseart was toying with because their metallics are usually a little bit more subtle These are not they are definitely rich and a little bit emollient Which is why I was struggling with that creasing but with that mixing medium from Isum, it was perfect perfect. I love it and it's such a perfect size for travel. It does have a mirror and it folds up so compact. It's a great little palette. I was worried at first when I was experiencing that creasing but mixing it with the mixing medium was perfect. I've been filming for quite some time. I don't like to make super super long videos so I think I will stop for now. I had a couple of other products to share with you but what I'll do is I'll put them aside. I'll keep them on my desk so that I know I still have to report back on them and I will end my video here for now and thank you so so much for sticking it through with me. I always wonder if people really watch these longer videos. Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to know if what sort of is your sweet spot for the duration of a video. Look forward to more makeup haul updates and now that I've updated you on a lot of products it means I can haul some more and I know that you guys really enjoy my hauls as much as I love hauling so look forward to a couple of videos of that nature coming up soon and I know I promised a giveaway so that one might have a giveaway. Just letting you know. So hopefully you'll consider subscribing and joining my makeup family, turning on that bell so you're notified when I upload, but it's going to be Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central. been doing that upload schedule for a while and it's working out very well for me. I would love to hear your thoughts on that if you think the time frame is okay and so on because again, um, my channel is for us and I definitely want to know how you're feeling about it as well. Thank you so much for joining me for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, give it a big thumbs up for me if you enjoy makeup haul updates and these rapid reviews on a variety of different types of products. Products. Thank you again for spending a few moments of your day with me. I really appreciate it and enjoy it so much. I hope you're having a great one and I look forward to seeing you again really, really soon on my next one. Bye-bye.